Hey there, I'm Nick Angiers from Focus Language Coaching. Welcome to this tutorial in which we're talking about Anki. Anki is a free mobile app that you can use to learn languages. And it's different from most language learning apps in that it's not designed to make money, right? It's designed to help you learn something. So a lot of apps, uh, they might make lots of money, but are they really effective? Uh, I don't know. If they are, then use that. Don't use Anki. Anki might have a little bit of a learning curve. It might take a week or two to learn it, but I'm pretty sure I would argue that it's much more effective than any of the other uh, language learning apps that are out there. It might not look as pretty. It's very basic looking, but it really works. I've used it for a couple of years now uh, to learn several languages and uh, I use it every day. You can use it to memorize anything. So like people's names, you know, geography, lots of medical students use it for the massive amounts of information that they have to remember, but it's very effective for learning languages. So that's what we're gonna focus on in this video, how you can use Anki to learn a language, um, mostly vocabulary, but you can use it for grammar and other things like that too. Okay, so what is Anki? Now, we know it's a mobile app, you also have the web version, so on a desktop, you know, in a browser. So you'll be using your both of those. You'll use the, um, the desktop version for making the cards, okay, and then the mobile app for uh, practicing every day. And you can make the cards in batches. I recommend once a week, you know, take an hour or a couple hours once a month and just make lots and lots of cards. So usually when we learn new words, uh, we might write it down and then we might review it within 24 hours, hopefully. And that's usually pretty much it. But you've probably noticed that after some time, if you don't come across the word again, then you probably forget it. Or if it's for a test, then after the test, you don't look at it again and then you forget it. So Anki solves this problem. It's called a spaced repetition system. And what that means is, instead of just looking at the word once and then never looking at it again, or looking at it every day, and after three days you know it, right? Those methods don't make sense. Each day it will give you a maximum of 20 words as the default, and you'll review those words. You, you decide what words you learn, you make the cards, and that will actually help you remember them uh, more than uh, just taking them from a deck that someone else made or um, a list in a textbook. But you can take a list and then make your own cards, and that can be very effective. So uh, let's say you made 100 cards this week. So on the first day, you're going to look at 20 cards. And once you feel like you know the card, then you'll press I know it on your mobile device. Okay, uh, And then it will have you review it again because it's a new card. But once you feel like you can recall this, and I say recall because you're not just looking at the word that you're trying to remember, that's not going to create a meaningful memory in your brain. So that's not signaling your brain that this is important. You're going to have to recall it and that will work much better. Okay, so you see the image and then you have to say what the word is. Okay, and then once you feel like you know it, it will go on to the next day. And then the next day, if you don't remember it, you're like, oh, what was that word? Then that's okay, it goes back to today. And then uh, if you can eventually remember it, which you will, then it will go on to the next day. However, the next day, if you can still remember it, it will go to three days. Three days later, if you still remember it, it goes to five days, and so on, until it gets to one year. Uh, at one year, then you have officially moved the word into your long-term memory. That means that a year from now, if you look at this word, you will remember it. Okay, so uh, these will be gone from your queue. And it doesn't take a whole year to get to the word. It takes maybe a few months, depending on uh, how many times you had to start over with the word. Okay, remember you're spacing it out each time. So you're only looking at the word for about five seconds, you know, on the first day, uh, and then the, um, the second day, and then five days later, eight days later, a month later, three months later, and so on. You're, you're only spending a very little time, very little time on each word each time you see it. And then if you can remember it, then it goes all the way out to a year. And, and then it's yours. So. If you use this method, you can remember lots and lots of words and not forget them. It's pretty amazing. It's very scientific. And uh, this space repetition system has been 
uh, proven time and time again to actually help you learn something. Okay, so why should you use Anki and not something else? Well, um, if you like using other apps, uh, they might <laughs> look prettier, um, but you'll probably have to pay for them. And mm, you might think that they work, but one reason that most language learning apps don't work and uh, also language education in general is that mm, it puts the language learner in the passive role. So it's like, here's the information that you should know. Okay. Whereas my philosophy is that the language learner, the student should take on the active role in learning the language. It's your language. You're the one who's going to remember. You're the only one. And being tested and being given homework that will help. But if you're motivated yourself, if you really want to learn, you can learn so much faster. Okay, so uh, that, that's the first reason is it puts the um, puts you, the language learner, in the active role. Second is it's free. And third is it's quite easy to use. So those are some great reasons why you should use Anki for memorizing vocabulary. With that said, let's get you registered. Okay, so I'm on my desktop device now. Uh, I'm using Chrome, but you know, you can use a uh, MacBook or whatever. Uh, and what you're gonna wanna do is go to ankiweb.net. That's the first thing that you'll do. And don't download the mobile app just yet. So we're gonna register on the desktop device. So you'll go to sign up and it'll ask for your email and all that. I won't walk you through that step, but you'll go to the email and then you'll confirm I'll give you a moment to do that. So pause this video while you do that, and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, and once you're registered, you'll want to go to apps.ankiweb.net and download it. You can download the version of your choice, and then install it. Use your email and password to log in. Pause the video while you do that. Okay, and once you've downloaded and installed it, then the interface will look something like this. Of course, once you've logged in, you'll need to create a deck. So just name it whatever you want. I have a different one for all the languages that I'm learning. Uh, as you can see, I love to learn languages. I usually focus on one or two at a time. Right now, I'm mostly doing Vietnamese and I'm also uh, progressing in my uh, Japanese. So uh, just as an example here, let's do a card for Vietnamese. So this is how you create a card. You go to the deck. And then you're gonna hit add. Okay. And then this little window here, we don't need anymore. So don't close it, that'll close the application. So just minimize that. Okay, and then there's really one type of card that I recommend using, and it is the basic and reversed one. So you can start with basic, but basic and reverse will just create two cards for each word that you're learning. And I'll explain the difference once we do it. Okay, so you're going to be using images. So we're not going to take the um, English translation. Okay, so this is the word I'm gonna learn, Jofuguk. So Jofuguk is um, a, a Fuguok dog, which is a, a special breed of dog that's unique to a single island in Vietnam, Fuguok Island. Jaw just means dog. So what's cool about this dog is down its back, it has like this strip of hair that's going opposite direction, like a swirl of hair down its back. It's called a ridgeback, uh, Fuguok ridgeback. And uh, the only other two ridgebacks, Thai and Rhodesian, are totally unrelated to this one. So this is kind of cool. So let's use this as an example. Now we're going to take a picture and put it on the front of the card. So what they mean by the front is, say you're using actual flashcards, right? So the front is the one that you look at, and then the back is the information that you're trying to remember. So we're going to take an image. And how you do that is you can just copy image and paste it, right? That's fine. Uh, you can save it and drag it. That takes a lot longer, and I don't really recommend doing that it that way because then you have a lot of images that you don't uh, need. So I recommend mm, just taking a screenshot of it. That way you don't have to use the whole image. Like if I'm using this one, I might only want the dog. I don't want the entire image. So let's do a screenshot on Windows. It is the Windows button, Shift and S. Okay, uh, and then that way if there's information, like you don't want words and stuff, you don't want English words uh, anywhere. You wanna keep 
English completely out of this, or whatever your native language is, if you're learning English. Uh, so you only want your target language to appear. Uh, that will train your brain to think in that language. Okay, and then, uh, oh, on a Mac it is Shift, Command, and 3. I'm obviously not a Mac user. Uh, so, and then on the back, you're just going to take the word that you want. So, draw for book. Okay, and we're going to put it here. And that's it, add. And then you keep going. So it really doesn't take that long, right? So uh, if I weren't talking, I could have done that in like 15 seconds. Don't spend too long on it, you know, looking for your, your favorite dog. Just take a quick look at what this word means. Use images as a, a visual dictionary. Sometimes it'll be different from what you think. Okay, and uh, if you're in a region where you can't use Google Images. So you want to use the Google Images, like I'm using Google uh, Vietnam. Uh, so if you're learning, I don't know, French, use Google France. Um, if you're, say, in People's Republic of China and you can't use Google, then Baidu, the, uh, the pictures that you will get will be much more limited, but uh, that's probably your best option. Okay, so that's how you make a card. Now, the next step is going to be to download the app on your mobile device. So you're all registered on Anki. The next step is to download it on your mobile device. If you're using Android, it's super easy. All you do is go to the Google Play Store, look for Anki Droid. It's the one with the blue star. The other ones are something else. If you're using an iPhone, there's something that you have to do because even though the app is open source, the version that you get on the um, App Store for iPhone is actually paid. So you have to pay about 20 US dollars to get it, but there's a very easy workaround to still be able to use it for free with the same interface. All you do is go to the web version. So uh, it's uh, the same website that you did to register, uh, but you're gonna go to it in a browser and then uh, just log in from there. Okay, and then that will sync with your computer. That's all. So next I'll show you the interface on your mobile device. So this is the mobile version interface and it will look very familiar because it's pretty much exactly the same as the desktop interface. So once you open it, go to the deck that you want to practice. So I'm going to go to my Vietnamese deck and this card, hmm, I made a long time ago. I don't actually remember what it is. So I'm just going to hit show answer at the bottom. It'll give me a few options. There'll be, uh, I forget. So 10 minutes with uh, again is what it's called. And then the 5.1 months hard, 11.8 months good, uh, and so on. So I hit uh, again. Okay, and this one is which means something like um, hesitate. So I got it, so I just hit show answer and then good. And then it'll ask me again in 4D means four days. So four days from now, it'll ask me what this card is again. Okay, and this is a new card. So it's gonna ask me for this one twice, even if I get it right the first time. So it's duat zai, which means to win an award. And notice that there's no English on any of these cards. So show answer, and then good, but it's gonna ask me uh, around mm, 10 minutes, within 10 minutes is what that means. Okay, and then if I ever forget, I can just look it up. I don't need to include the one the prize. So something like that. It's gonna be a different translation in each context, but by using an image, I can just associate it with that image. I don't have to worry about how it translates to English in different contexts. Okay, and this is another one. This one is the bao, which is forecast, you know, like a weather forecast. Okay, oh, and I included the Chinese um, just because this just happens to be a Chinese word and I just happen to know Chinese. This one is jin yang, which is like a branch. And I remember these because I've practiced them. And I associate this image with jin yang instead of branch. It could be the branch of a tree or whatever. I just forget all about English. This is jin yang. That's all I need to know. If I ever get a pronunciation wrong, like I go to show answer and then I see the answer is different from what I said. So it says like jin yang or something like that. So the tone's wrong. Then that means I'll have to review it. And when I learn the word, I make sure that I know that I'm saying it right. You can always add a pronunciation file, like an audio file to the back of it. I don't necessarily recommend relying on that. It makes it a, a lot 
more of a time investment. And when you learn a word, you should really learn it well enough that you, you don't need to have that kind of thing. Uh, and also when learning a language, you should learn the pronunciation very well so that when you do learn new words, okay, here we go. Here's the, the guatzai. Okay, so show answer. Okay, and here is an example of why you shouldn't use words to memorize words. So this one is down and it's swung, which is a word that I already know, but it, there's not a very meaningful connection between these two languages. I should have used an image. I'm gradually getting rid of all these ones. And, and this one is ready to go to a year now, which means it will get filtered out of my deck, but I probably could have memorized it faster if I had used an image. Okay, and here's another new card. This one should be Galpmat, which means to appear. Let's go to show answer. Okay, attempts. Okay, so that was wrong. And that's okay. I'm just going to go to again, and it'll ask me again in less than a minute. Attempts that means to participate in. Okay, and here's a really old card. This one is the color gray. Uh, of course, I had to review this one when it had appeared after several months of not seeing it. This one should be Mao Sam. Uh, show answer. Yep, Mao Sam. So I'm going to go to good, which will be six days from now. And I think you get the idea, right? So you just spend a few seconds on each card. And I have over 100 cards to do today, but that really is only going to take about 20 minutes. So I'm just going to go back to the, um, the main page here. And then the top right, the little uh, two arrows in a circle, that's the sync button. So just hit that, and that'll sync with your Anki Web. One thing I didn't come across was a reverse card. So that's just the same thing as a basic card, except backwards. You'll see the um, word that you're trying to memorize, and then you just have to think of the image in your head that matches that word. Uh, it's much easier to do it that way. Uh, but if you have cards for both, I think that will help strengthen the word in your memory. And that's all you need to know to get started with Anki for memorizing vocabulary. I'm sure that you'll find in no time that it works really well, and this will be a game changer for your language learning moving forward. Of course, there are lots of other features of Anki, different types of cards, you know, you can add audio. Those are all things for you to explore. Don't worry about any of that right now. Just make simple cards and get into the habit of doing it. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Once again, I'm Nick Angers, and thanks so much for watching this tutorial.